Welcome back, Chiefs Kingdom. The linebackers are the core of any defense, and it has to be taken a look at very closely this particular offseason for the Kansas City Chiefs. A lot of good youth, a couple of older veterans, some free agents. We're going to dig deep into it and update you on a couple of staff changes going on in Kansas City. Welcome to Locked On Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Welcome back, Chiefs Kingdom. This is another episode of Locked On Chiefs, part of the Locked On Network. We are free for your team every day and on every platform. That's what we do. Thanks for making us your first listen. And if you'd like a second listen, check out Locked On NFL Draft, where me and Crocker are going to debate some tight ends and some other things this week. I think you'll enjoy that. Don't forget to hit the like, the sub, and the bell over on YouTube. Chris, you look like you're not so happy with that. <laughs> no, it's fine. I just Tight ends is not a position that I'm even thinking about for Kansas City right now, so I get where you're going, but I get where you're going. So no big and deal. That's the low hanging fruit, right? Um, I'm Ryan Tracy. You can find me at Ryan Tracy NFL on Twitter, and I'm the founder of Rogue Analytics and Performance Consulting, as well as RGR Football, where we do all kinds of film breakdown. And like I said, you can find me on Locked On NFL Draft. And I'm Chris Clark, and you can find me as it says Chris Clark NFL. Or I'm also now on Chiefs Corner, going to be talking more about the salary cap, which we're going to actually get into a little bit today when we're talking about positional reviews. And going to be talking about statistics and analytics over at Chiefs Corner. Go give that a follow uh, as well. Yeah, I think that's great because we need to take a, a 360 look at every position this season. And uh, it, there could be a lot of changes. There's there's all kinds of cap implications from the stars. What has to happen? And probably there's probably no more wide gamut at any one position than there is at linebacker, right? Because... The top three players, two are very young, and one is a little bit older. And at this point, we have to discuss the the future of Anthony Hitchens, probably first and foremost, because it sets up the whole rest of the position group this offseason. Yeah, and we kind of talked about Anthony Hitchens when we started talking about how they can create cap space. Uh, this mm -hmm. is how they do it. Uh, they cut Anthony Hitchens, and they save $4 million – or sorry, $8 million in cap space this year. So – uh, I do think that Anthony Hitchens has played his last snap in Kansas City, uh, so I would imagine Kansas City will be looking either in the draft or maybe in free agency, as you kind of said a couple of times, uh, to replace him this year. Yeah, I mean, and that's – when we take a look back <clears throat> at what Anthony Hitchens was brought in here to be, a leader, a middle linebacker, a guy that was good against the pass, I think two of those things have been true. Do you? Yeah, I think that he's been a leader for sure. I mean, the team thinks he's a leader. He's a captain. So, I mean, there's that. Uh, I think for the most part, he's been pretty good when he, you know, tackling people and whatnot. Uh, the real problem has been in the past defense. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at as well. And I think it, at this point, with cap savings on the table, like you said, it is quite a bit. Like, even with a, a pre June designation, if you release him eight, does it change a lot if it's a, a post June first designation? Uh, it does change. Oh, wait, no, it does not change because he is not under contract. I'm sorry, in 2023, so you cannot spread it out. Gotcha. So there is no reason to wait if that's what you decide to do. And unfortunately, it feels like his time in Kansas City has run its course with the, uh, quite honestly, the faster than expected development into a full-time starting level linebacker in Nick Bolton. I, I think that has really cost any kind of patience the Chiefs might have tried to to keep him on the roster for another season. Yeah, and I will say this, you know, when we start talking about these different linebackers, there's a lot of conjectures to where they're going to go and, and how things are going to work out. Nick Bolton, Mackley Hill award winner for this year for the Kansas City Chiefs, which to me is, is a huge surprise. Um, uh, he had some very stiff competition on that rookie class uh, with Creed Humphrey and with Trey Smith, but he ended up being the most valuable – or sorry, the – best rookie is was voted by his teammates and, and by the chiefs. So mm -hmm. that's significant. He had a great season. Don't get me wrong. I just Creed Humphrey Humphrey season. I thought was uh, far and above the best of any of the rookies, but I'm not going to complain because I was really excited about Bolton being here and what he has shown throughout the season. Yeah. And we're going to talk about him and Willie Gay as a combo here a little bit more in depth after the break, but specifically for Hitchens, I don't know that there's value left in what he brings to the table, particularly in the pass defense and trying to run in the nickel that you'd maybe originally thought and that we've certainly seen over the last two seasons. 
Yeah, and I think that it's, you know his leadership is really his biggest thing, and and so that's going to be a big question. And when you're starting to talk about leadership with this team, you also need to mention Tyron Matthew, won the most valuable player of the Chiefs, according to the Chiefs. So uh, he is also considered the leader, and he's also the captain of the defense uh, when it came to the playoffs. So that's something to watch if you're going to end up without either of those guys this offseason. That actually brings me to something that we'll have to talk about that here in a little bit. Someone will have to take that mantle over. I think we both have a pretty good idea who that will be, but what, if anything, is there to give the Chiefs any pause to stay with this contract and let it play it out and, and, and just finish it out? Because I expect the $8 million is more attractive right now than the player is. I can't see them playing this out. I mean, his cap number for this year is $13 million. So, I mean, you you have no option of, of really letting this play out unless you're wanting to have a cap hit of $12 million, unless you're going to sign into an extension, which just creates more problems down the road. So I don't see that happening either. And the bigger thing for me is they continued to let Hitchens play and had Bolton on the bench. Bolton won Rookie of the Year for the Chiefs, not playing a significant number of snaps and basically – uh, you know, leading the team in tackles and playing what 30% of the snaps. Oh, I think it was like 46 on the year, but yeah, something like that. Okay. Well, something that much smaller than it should have been is really where I was going with that. Right. And it is all relative. You're right. And I think that's even a, a bigger point when you consider if you allow Anthony Hitchens to stay on this roster, the salary alone demands playing time, yep. which then bites into what the younger players can get. And yeah. I think we and, should get into those and, guys and where they stand. I agree. And I just want to say this really quick before we move on. The other thing that it makes sure of is if he is on this roster, uh, he can, he has to play because of that number, but then you also can't be a leader if you're not going to be starting or not playing. So that also plays into it as well. Uh, I think they would, if they're going to keep him, they're going to play him for exactly that reason. You're right. Yep. So I, I think, unfortunately, folks, the time for Anthony Hitches has come and gone in Kansas City, and we should see that here. Uh, I don't know the exact date, but I would guess before the draft. We will see when that actually occurs. But the younger players are going to take the forefront at this position. We're going to talk about them in a second. But even though the football season is over, basketball is just getting up to its full steam. March Madness is right around the corner, and there's other things going on besides basketball, all kinds of sports that are coming down the line. Hockey's ticking up, boxing. You have all kinds of spring sports starting. Uh, if baseball gets off the ground, we'll see if that actually happens. And you can even go in and check out UFC. And if you want to lay any odds there, the best place to do it is bet online. It remains the best spot for scores, podcasts, news, anything you need to get an edge if you're going to put money on the line. Head to the website and use it from your mobile phone or anywhere that you want to check out trends, news, and action. Bet online where the game begins. Now, the younger players are going to be the guys that take the forefront. We've already seen that at this point with how much they've been playing. And I, for one, am ready for that move on. I am ready to see them really be the focus, particularly – in the nickel, but also in the base. Like, are, are you ready for Nick Bolton and Willie Gay to be the, the core of the linebacker group exclusively? I am. Yeah. I think you, you saw from what, from what you saw from Nick Bolton this year, I think that you have to be very excited about how this linebacker core is going to look going forward. And then uh, Willie Gay also had very good reps this season and, and made progress throughout the year. So I think you have to be excited about this young core uh, with those two guys. The question is going to be anybody that's behind them. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, and when you look at total snap counts, we were talking earlier about Anthony Hitchens, who played 697 snaps this season. Nick Bolton actually outsnapped him at 732 for the year. And so Hitchens that was left, out a couple games. So that plays into right. it. And here's, here's the part that I think really plays well into because we saw Willie Gay get hurt late at the end of the year. Nick Bolton played. Through the season, what did he play? All the games. Willie Gay played 15 games this season. Still good, but he missed a few. Put in 554 snaps. That was so the early two in the of year. them together. Right. The, but the two of them together both eclipsed 500. So you can see that despite having a pretty heavy rotation with a veteran in Anthony Hitchens, they were still able to do it. And I think that that bodes well for them taking over and absorbing those snaps where they're both going to get up into the 800 range is my guess. 
That'd be my guess as well. And, you know, we've kind of looked at, you know, when we've been doing our mock draft Monday, it's been looking at the linebacker position specifically to find somebody else that is youth that you can put in with these two guys. And I think that that's probably, that's how I would go. I know you have said that it could be, you know, somebody that they bring in from free agency. So we'll see. Yeah, it's, it's a possibility because the other thing that is going to happen is that you're going to see Ben Neiman, who is also a free agent right now, that's 600 snaps on the season walking out the door. And I don't think that that's an issue in terms of performance because I don't think you saw enough from Ben Neiman, who is the, the lowest graded linebacker on this roster by both me and confirmed by PFF's grading. I, I think that at that point, his course has also run its its full length in Kansas City. And Ben Neiman, I think, may be able to play better in a better role for another team, but I don't think he can do the things that they need him to do here. So that really leaves you with just the two guys. And beyond that, Dorian O'Daniel is also a free agent. The only other guy with any serious experience, Darius Harris played one snap this season. So you literally have Bolton and Gay and a lot of question marks, both depth and for a starter in the base. So I think not only do you have to consider drafting one, I think you have to get a veteran presence just for experience in the room, if nothing else. So let me ask a question because we didn't talk about this, and I guess it could be an option. If Hitchens was willing to come back for one year for $1 million, he'd still have like a roughly close to a $6 million cap hit. Would you take that? I probably wouldn't. Only because, Fair. again, the coaching staff will be – tempted to make him the guy in the middle again and that stunts nope. nick bolton it slows yep. your ability to defend the pass it, it does too many bad things i agree i think that it, the only way i would do that is if the coaching staff knows that he's not going to be the starter at that position if they move him i'd be okay with that because it's basically a sunk cost you're losing four million dollars in prorated bonus that's basically you can't get out of that this year um so you know just something mm -hmm. to think about uh but the thought process of them bringing in a veteran and bringing in a leader made me want to go there. Yeah. I mean, and I don't even know that it has to be a leader. I'm, I'm okay with a veteran role player to be there, to be the support system for Bolton and gay. I think you want to do everything you can to, uh, you know, to, to prepare the soil and water the grass so that it's Nick Bolton that grows to be that leader. I don't yep. think it's going to be that hard to get there. Yeah, no, I agree with you. So lots of other questions when you start talking about the other guys. Ben Neiman, uh, I would agree. I think he's gone. I, I just cannot see him back in Kansas City after the year he's had uh, in, in the the time he's had in Kansas City, although nothing's going to shock me because they seem to keep putting him on the field. Yeah, and again, I think it just detracts from that comfort level, detracts from the d development of the two young guys and yep. what I think has to be a third, right? So in my plan – from the looks of this position and the thinness that you have here, you not only have to bring in a veteran, which you can, I think should be a backup or a starting Sam that is not one of your top two. You also have to draft one so that you can stay young at the position. You can have the speed and the coverage ability. We've talked about some of those, and I'm sure we'll hit those in mock drafts to come, folks. Monday will be our next mock draft. Don't miss that. But overall, I think this is an opportunity because – you're really watching probably four of the six linebackers on this roster depart. And I think that allows you to remake the position that has been a, a source of frustration and, and something you have to make up for it for the last couple of seasons and turn it into a strength. I, and I think the biggest thing that I take away from that though, is watching what the, the bread Veach did to the offensive line. And I know I keep going back to that, but if you look at what he did with the offensive line, he revamped it completely in one off season. You don't have to do that with the linebackers. You need to bring in no. linebackers. Don't get me wrong, but you've got two studs that are going to be the heart and soul of your defense at that level. So you only have to go and find the complementary pieces, which is going to be a lot easier. And I think that they will find figure something out there. I agree. And I think they're going to have to put the, the revamp into the actual front four. I think you have one of the front four set, and that's it. So I, maybe you can revamp four players, and maybe one of those becomes that third linebacker. That's what we could see happen. Now, there are going to be some changes about how the whole defense works and a couple of changes to who's going to be out there. We're going to get to that as well. But before we get there, let me tell you about our friends over at Built Bar. 
Have you tried the puffs? They just came out with a new flavor of puffs. If you haven't tried them, you're missing out on one of the Bill, Bill Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar, they're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Low calorie, high protein. Replace your candy bar with these. They are better. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from two to 300 calories. Most built bars contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. And as I said, compare that to the candy bar of 240 calories. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. They are all very delicious and new flavors are coming out all the time. At Bill Bar, they are all about the taste. They make it delicious first and then figure out how to make it healthy. Go to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. I look forward to those. I, Bill hasn't sent me any of those yet. I, I'm patiently waiting, everyone, just so you know. Um, <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. And I can't say I blame you, though, because it's always great getting those in the mail, isn't it? It absolutely is. Especially when and you so, go another company. Well, <laughs> and that we don't know who's coming. We don't know who's going. And that's the question with the coaching staff as well. What is going on? A lot of hubbub about Eric Bieniemy. We don't know anything, folks. We do, I would actually expect to have had some kind of announcement by now. Um, we heard what was it, Super Bowl Sunday, that there's going to be a meeting, there's going to be a decision made. Um, the contract has expired. When we know more about the situation that we can confirm, we will definitely let you know and we will discuss it at that point. But it's not the only contract that expired. Another one did. And this is because the Chiefs don't generally release the terms of their coaching contracts. So we don't necessarily know when a coach is going to be a free agent or his contract is coming up. But Sam Madison's contract expired as well. And his old team, the Miami Dolphins, a team he played for in his career, went back and grabbed him. He is now going to be the DB coach in Miami. And the Chiefs are now looking for another piece of what we thought might be a set defensive staff. Yeah, and it sounds like he's also going to be a past defensive coordinator, past defense coordinator. So I think it's also on top of, you know, being the DB coach, he's also going to have that. Uh, so I think that that's something, you know, he's getting a little bit of a promotion, I guess. Um, so good for him. But uh, I think it's something somebody that you can't see is going to miss. Yeah, and they have to figure that out. Now, Dave Barrett, as we understand, is still with the team. Uh, we will get at some point probably – Post combine is my guess. We'll get a rundown of who the chief staff is going to be once they solidify that and they've made all the decisions and they know they will probably let everyone else know. Maybe they're they won't, and just because I said that out loud, they'll confound us and wait till you know training camp. Just but, because that's what Ryan does, <laughs> right? Yeah. Hey, um, you got to have somebody out there at OTA, so hopefully we know by then. But we'll find out. Um, but I, I, you have to expect that they're going to backfill not only a position that is a little bit more corner specific, but I, I would hope that they actually try to fill it out more than that. I think right now this staff feels a bit small to me, even the way that was built this last season. Like I think you could use another coach to work in the secondary that is very young and may get younger depending on the situation with Tyron Matthew. I think you probably want to backfill and, and create another linebacker position to help Brennan Daly out because these linebackers, as we've discussed today, are going to be young, especially the key ones. And so I think – if you have more staff on hand, I think that helps the situation when you have a lot more teaching and training still to do rather than a veteran-heavy position group or defense in general. Well, I was going to say, and it's not just position group, it's defense in general because I, you know, we keep looking at this draft and we keep looking and saying, you know, they could have three or four defensive guys that they draft this year and maybe maybe six. five. Yeah, who, who knows how many they're going to take. Point is, <laughs> that's where we expect them to use their draft capital or at least a lot of it. So you're going to have a lot of young guys, and I would expect that some of those guys are going to have to play. So you're going to have a very young roster this year. I agree. And I think more hands on deck as at the coaching level is going to help that. We mm -hmm. will we'll have to find out what happens in the secondary in particular. Does they merit move over to corners, and do they bring someone else in to work with the safeties? Do they bring two people in, which is my preference? The question that then becomes is who are they working with, and one guy – that unfortunately got into a bit of trouble, and we don't know the extent of it yet, but Chris Lamont seems to be in a position where he may not be on this roster any longer. Yeah, Chris Lamont is, is a guy that you have to wonder about. Um, he is you know, in a situation with the Las Vegas PD. He turned himself in, and he's already been arraigned and, and let out on bail. So 
Um, you know, his agents come out and said he didn't do anything. We'll see whether or not that actually sticks. Uh, I don't want to jump to conclusions right now. He's in the, he's a exclusive rights free agent, which means he's in Kansas City. If the Chiefs extend him a contract, uh, we'll see. I, I would think he's still here uh, unless it comes out that he actually did what he's being what people are saying he's being accused of. Uh, but right now it was just they wanted him in connection with. So we'll see. Yeah, let, let's cross our fingers. I am very hopeful that some of this dies down and that knock on wood, Chiefs players, if you're listening, and I know some of you check things out from time to time, let's keep it calm this offseason, okay? Everybody relax. Please. Get a little bit more rehab in. <laughs> and they will not. A little not bit of training regimen, which is something. <clears throat> Sorry, go ahead. A little bit more training regimen can't hurt, which is something that Clyde Edwards Alaire let slip the other day. I think it was with Matt Connor over at AA that he didn't quite have the offseason. He had a gallbladder bladder removed, and that that kind of messed up his whole offseason. Didn't get a carry between the Super Bowl and training camp. Yeah. That's crazy. And that's a problem. So remember it, when we were worried about the player. knee and all that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> especially for a young player, that's a, that's a problem. So – uh, you yeah. know, and I was just going to see if you would uh, do us the favor of jinxing or unjinxing, you know, saying that they're not going to assign Tyree Kill to a contract extension. Well, see, and, and folks, if you don't know what Chris is getting at, I am notoriously bad at saying yay or nay what will happen with contract extensions because it's the one part of the business that I think is just so circumstantial it's very difficult to do. So, yes, in order to make this happen, I will say that Tyreek Hill will not get an extension before the draft. How's that? Thank you. That's what I wanted. <laughs> <sighs> well, now and, that we've and, tested all the gods. <laughs> I, I did get a question that I want to ask you really quick since we're just closing up and this is our last show for Friday. Any chance that you think Kansas City could make a trade for – Michael Thomas? No. Nope. Yeah. That's kind of where I am. Yeah, that's... Cap number actually isn't that bad. I looked at it. It's not horrible. Yet. Well, but, <laughs> but it's not it guaranteed. No, none of it's guaranteed. That's the thing. So... Oh, okay. Like, you could actually do a one-year rental, and it wouldn't be a horrible contract. Um, but, you know, he's going to want another contract. And But coming off of the year he didn't have last year... That's the one thing that kind of sticks out to me with all of it is that, you know, right now, if somebody traded for him, uh, his salary for this current year is uh, 15 million, 15.5. Mm -hmm. So that's not a horrible you number. You have to expect that Tyreek's going to get more than that anyway when mm -hmm. the extension comes down. So that part no, and I don't expect it. I just wanted to throw it out there because somebody asked. So. <clears throat> Um, For me, it's the draft capital that you have to give up because then you're you're taking on more contract and you're mm -hmm. you're not getting that pick that will keep other contracts low. So, well, but the Saints are Maybe so bad at, quick. with caps with the cap situation <laughs> that they need to figure out how to free some of it up, and that would help. That's that's a fair point. So I, maybe I'll change my mind. It's not completely out of the realm of possibility. Um, but I think it's a very, 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 very long shot. How's that? Yes, uh, and I agree with you. And I will, <laughs> but I will say this: I expect Beach is going to make some kind of trade this off season. He just seems to be always doing. And I'm not talking draft picks; I'm talking it for an actual player. Um, so yeah, I, I just I expect that that's going to happen. I think it could be an option as well. That they want to take every avenue they can to fortify this roster, and that's exactly what they should. That's that's what the good ones do. So. We will see what happens. We'd like to know what you think of the linebacker situation or anything that we talked about today. If you'd leave your comments on the YouTube channel and like, sub, and hit the bell, as well as leaving us an iTunes review, that would go a very long way. We would appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Mock Draft is Monday, and it's going to be every Monday. We're going to keep running through those. I hope you guys are here for that. There's a lot of scenarios to go through. So have an enjoyable weekend. We'll be back with you after that, and we'll talk to you on Monday.